Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Bless you, Sister Ashley, and blessings to all the Daughters of Zion. It's an honor to be here for another episode of Sister to Sister. It's good to see everyone in the chat um, chiming in and putting comments. It looks like I've got uh, tens rolling in, Sister Ashley, so I can hear you very well. If you can hear me, then we can move forward when you're ready. Praise Yah. I am reconnecting my chat room right now. If you are listening to us for the first time, if you're finding us and trying to dive into uh, the women of the ministry, the sisters behind the show, uh, we represent a lot of women. We might be the two that are speaking, but there's a lot of us that live and dwell together, learning to love one another, and most definitely without the women behind the microphone, uh, we wouldn't be in front of you or who we are. We wouldn't have any experiences or lessons learned. There's a lot of great women in my life and uh, women who love the most high. Yeah. So I want to give praise to the Father for those women. Uh, you might not see them and hear them. We are just like you. We are real. We are in the flesh. We are learning. We are growing. Um, you know, I had a sister visit a couple weeks ago that said, 
wow, you know, once you come back a few times, you really do realize that you guys are just like us. Like, yes, we, we really, really are. The sooner you realize that, the more you get in the grind with us. Don't exalt us. Don't put us too high. Put us right where we need to be, giving all reverence and glory to the Most High Yah for each of us. And 92 days into the feast. Did y'all hear that? Wow, right? Until our first feast. Uh, we're going to have atonement. We're going to have trumpets. We're going to have tabernacles. So we like to get that countdown on the show. Uh, we had a great Ask the Elect last night. We're going to talk about that. We got two emails we're going to read. And I'm going to ask you if you have any questions or any input about last night's Ask the Elect, please give your favorite quote. Give your uh, give the lesson you learned. Give your what you enjoyed the most, what cuts you the most. Um, I don't know. Maybe even if your call tonight or your email doesn't have anything to do with Ask the Elect, that's okay, too. We like your input this season. We are asking you from week to week until it changes for you guys to call in. Guest call in 310-982-4226. Do you have a testimony? Do you want to say thank you? Um, and then, of course, straightway help meets all lowercase at gmail.com. While we're live on air, we will take your emails. Praise Yah. Uh, Mother Jennifer, say a few words. Yes, ma'am. Um, definitely was a wonderful broadcast last night, and it just truly left me in a state of being thankful, um, you know, of being a woman in this ministry. Um, I know if you're looking from the outside, a lot of times people think that um, the women in this ministry are oppressed, and, you know, it's just because they don't understand what order looks like. But I know that women are the most protected um, truly the most protected when you look at uh, Yah and how he has developed the structure. We truly are pr- protected women. We just have to submit and obey. Like we truly do have the quote-unquote easy job in this. Uh, we just have to submit and obey. So just listening to the, the structure, uh, listening to um, how Yah has set up the family structure and um you know, the the levels of accountability and just everything in the ministry, it just truly made me uh, just grateful that I am here, that y'all chose me to actually be here. And I get to be under submission. I was chosen to actually be under submission, and that is um, a blessing. Sister Ashley? Praise yeah. Um I typed in really quick while you were talking, what is the meaning of oppression? Right, to get the definition, Google pops up for me, prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control. And I guess the word that stands out the most would be unjust, um, because we seek just ways. We are walking in a just way. We are um, counseled and directed by a spirit of justice and trying with all of our hearts to avoid the spirit of error as a people. And so... That justice that we are marching in and that justice that our leaders are trying with their hearts and spirits to lead us in keeps us from oppression from them, okay? If there be any mental depression or oppression from your inner self and your inner being, I'm not going to say we don't have that because when it's time to purge you by justice, Right, and you're purged by a righteous way, there's a lot of things that are going to come up and out of you, and a lot of people are going to kick. There's not a lot of individuals that can actually live together successfully, you know, meaning as a whole, you know, from coast to coast. So you're not going to find a lot of people that are going to be willingly able to grind with each other and to learn one another and to put in the effort that it takes to build relationships, you know. We're not just building relationships with our husbands. We're building them with every single person on the community, everyone in the home. And you are laboring to build a relationship with more than one person at a time uh, continually, you know. And it is a work. It is a work. So anything to add on that, Mother Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. And, you know, when there's purging or 
um, sharpening. It's it's not going to feel good. It's not going to feel like a pleasant experience. Um, the the things that feel good are you know giving yourself a pass or getting your own way, and that's not the way to holiness. So. Um, the things that are going to inconvenience your flesh are the things that are going to allow you to actually grow. Because when you're out there in the world, when you're out there by yourself, you don't have that same level of sharpening. So if you're in a state where, you know, well, wow, this doesn't feel good. You know, Yah hasn't called us to feel good. He's just called us to, to be holy and to be righteous. And by any means necessary, he will he will do it as long as you allow him. Sister Ashley? There is mental pressure and distress in changing and conforming to the Father because we've been in transgression. And when we come together and we learn that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, it actually takes time before you understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Everyone has not arrived to that understanding in their inner being. And then once you understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, you don't wrestle against Elder Rufus, you don't wrestle against Bonnie, you don't wrestle, you know, go down the list, right? When you understand that you don't, then there's a period of time where you practice stopping wrestling, and then there's the period of time where you um, you can love someone despite their flesh. I really walk in the understanding of what you wrestle against, knowing that, Mental oppression, if there be any Mental pressure, mental distress It would be from The contrariness Within us, you know As the Father changes us Anything to add, Mother? Yes, and and loving someone In spite of their flesh In order to really do that You have to have experienced The love of Yah The revelation that He loved you In spite of your flesh the revelation that people tolerated you in spite of your flesh. They they have loved you um, beyond the hatred that you have displayed for yourself. And when you truly grasp that and you get a hold of that and you realize that and you know how merciful he has been to you, then you will love someone else in spite of their flesh. So it's, you know, you've been delivered in that area and then you want to show that same level of love towards someone else in that area, towards your sister or whomever it might be. Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. Well said. Hey, you said the words hatred. You said the word self. Let's go to the email. This email is not um, about last night's show at all. So remember, if you have something to email us tonight, the inbox is open. We will read it um, if it is you know, acceptable for the show, if it's something that we can read and help you with, if you have questions. It's We don't want to give you just one general area. Um, What's in your heart? What do you want to ask that might help someone else? Do you have a testimony? Remember that throughout the night, whether I remind you again or not. Um, So if you enjoyed Ask the Elect last night, if you haven't heard of it, uh, tell them how to find it, Mother Jennifer. I'm sorry, Sister Ashley. It it cut out a little bit on my end. Can you repeat that? Yes, can you tell them where to find Ask the Elect and tell them a little bit about it as we request tonight from them any feedback, anything, any light bulb moments, any any time that their mind was just really, like, thankful or or they got cut by it, and maybe someone doesn't understand what we're speaking about. Just tell them where to find it and when. Yes, ma'am. You can uh, tune in to Ask the Elect on YouTube, and you can reach that on Pastor Dowell's Uh, YouTube channel and ask the elect um, you will have elders you will have of course our shepherd and you will have our elders Um, uh, last night was actually uh, Pastor Dowell and Pastor Muir and uh, Elder Rufus speaking about the structure of family biblical uh, family structure is what they were talking about and there's so many areas that they really went into, and they could have continued and continued to to speak on it. Um, But there was so much that was shared, and you can uh, listen to that every fourth day night, which would be every Wednesday night. And it starts at 7 o'clock p.m. um, Eastern Standard Time. So um, it's just a lot of information being shared. Um, 
just so much information that uh, comes forth, and there's always typically a different topic. Uh, that is discussed, and you typically don't know what's going to be discussed until the day of, but please call in and please um, share anything that stuck out to you last night, anything, um, maybe there's a particular uh, quote that stuck in your heart. I know there was something that just really stuck with me um, all day, you know, like literally all day, just about the Daughters of Zion just truly having the Holy Spirit for themselves and knowing and understanding that there's safety um, in Yah for them, that they are not, um, that that they are not silenced at all, that they do um, have a voice, that Yah hears them. Um, Thank you for the correction. It's every other fourth day. Every other fourth day is ask the elect. So back to you, Sister Ashley. So what do you teach your daughter if, you're not right about something. If she sees something that's not right, have you have you discussed that before? Actually, yes, ma'am. Um, Elder Rufus has a um, he and I have a dialogue with her, and um, with Mariah, he tells her, you know, one day you will be um, at the age where you will get married. Um, one day, and he told her that it is your choice. Now, of course. He is the one that will help her along with that path, with the decision. But it's not going to be um, the type of thing where you have to marry this particular man whether you want to or not. He has explained that to her. If she believes that something is off or, you know, he always says you got to have your own relationship with the father. Yes. Um, Papa does guide you, Papa does lead you, but Papa also teaches her to learn how to seek the Father for herself as well, to know that, okay, um, I have to have understanding for myself as well. He teaches her how to discern for herself as well. Um, And, and, you know, there's no gag order at all on anyone in Elder Rufus's family, Um, even the daughters, if, if there's anything at all. We um, have an open dialogue with Elder Rufus, or even if we needed to get to Pastor Dow, we could get to Pastor Dow. But it's just it's such an open um, area of conversation. No one's ever cut off at all from being able to freely discuss things that they don't understand. Um, it's, It's not even, like he says, we never argue. We never argue about anything. But if there's questions that we have, we can freely come with questions. If there's things that we don't quite understand or we need a little more understanding on, then we're free to discuss that. But there's a way to do that. So I love how there's no hypocrisy in what is being taught when he talks about um, the women not having a gag order um, at all. He stands on that. He truly does. And it's the same for his home. And so we are, we just truly are free women, but we're under, we're under headship. We are um, truly under headship and it's righteous authority. It's righteous leadership. It's righteous um, headship. Sister Ashley. Hallelujah. It's been a while since we've had what what we call internet trolls in our chat room. So Sakina, be on guard and go ahead and delete that comment and kick that, kick that one out of here. Hallelujah. Let's proceed. Let's go to uh, an email sent, I believe, yesterday. Uh, Total freedom from self-hatred and self-rejection, the email says, and from self-unforgiveness. Um, there's also a little portion at the end, if you can see it, Mother Jennifer, that she had left out and, and went ahead and sent that second email and included it. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. Um, she says, Shalom, Sister Ashley and Mother Jennifer. I am writing this email in a state of desperation. I was just listening to the rebroadcast of the Circle of Love and the testimonies from that Shabbat service. I was a little hesitant to email again, but I really need your help. I also, just a couple of days ago, was prompted by the Ruach to go back and listen to Pastor Dow's teaching series on Leviathan. She said, I was in my kitchen last night. It was a little late, and I was up alone because I live alone now. As I was standing there making coffee, 
I began to cry out to the Father to help me understand what is going on in me that is causing me to start and stop, start and stop. And I could hear him so clearly say to me, Leviathan, and it hit me like a ton of bricks because I had already heard Pastor's series on Leviathan, but the Father told me to go listen again, so I did. I'm so tired of living my life in this unstable, wish-washy, wicked environment. The desire that Yah has put in me so strongly is to be around his people. I cannot grow here. I keep having these thoughts that if I can't be around like-minded people of Yah, then I don't want to live. I am 59 years old, and I just want, I just need to be in the presence of true saints of Yah before I leave this life, even if only for one day, to get a glimpse of what living set apart is like and how freeing it must be. I know the Most High loves me. I know that I am called, chosen to live a holy set apart life for him and his glory. I have no doubt about that. However, I have no clue how to attain that lifestyle all alone. Bottom line. I suppose it is that I need righteous authority in my life, and it is simply nowhere around me. I have most of my life been ruled over in unrighteousness. However, realizing that if I can be ruled over in unrighteousness, righteous authority will be truly freeing for me. It's what I need. I'm truly at my wit's end, and I'm I'm afraid for my very soul. I hope and pray that Yah will allow this email to fall where he intends for me to be directed. I love you all, and thank you so much for your labor of love, sacrifice, and dedication to Yah that we might benefit and be healed. In Jesus' name, I will be turned, I will be tuned into tonight's Sister to Sister broadcast and listen for direction. Is that it, Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. That is one of the two that we'll read tonight. Um, hey, let's take a minute respectfully to uh, try to help our sister. Um, the first thing, I'll be honest with you, Mother Jennifer, that came to my mind was an immediate verse in Second Peter. And I'll read it for you guys. So you have a sister who is, um, you know, separated from, from any form of fellowship And I, with empathy, cannot imagine um, what you may hear in your inner man, what Satan may present to you as you hear about the unity, as you hear about um, what we're doing, the fruit of what we're doing. Uh, the, The standard is preached here, you know, and... This is what I thought of. Hope this all makes sense. I'm trying to take it slow, Mother Jennifer. You can always fill in the gap. 2 Peter 2, 4 through 9 says, If the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And he delivered the just lot. This is the verse that had come to me, the Second Peter 2, 7. He delivered the just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Now, out there, where you may live in your apartments or your duplexes or your subsidized housing or your projects or your rural areas or wherever you may be, and you see a better way visually or something that you desire, and you seek the most high, you find this way, and you hear the word that is preached, and it is giving you a visual presentation over and over, And then you're going to continually compare that, I'm assuming, to where you are. And even Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, it says, That righteous man dwelt among them 
and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Most High knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. And he knows how to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And that's a good promise for you in your circumstance because the Most High knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Please don't allow any amount of vexation do anything except get you to make moves, make changes. You know? Mother Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. And, you know, um, in the email, um, there was a mention of, you know, not understanding what is causing her to start and to stop and to start and to stop. And, you know, it, it's really a, a blessing that the Father gave her an understanding to deal with Leviathan and to even have the tools to understand the workings, the inner outer workings of Leviathan. Um and you know there's it's it's encouraging because there's something that you can actually be working on um now you know you always work on yourself never look at everything as if it's doom and gloom there's always work to be done it may not be packing your bags today to move to another location tomorrow but it's getting rid and purging the things that are ungodly that are within you um of course, Yah would want you to deal with whatever that is that causes you to start and to stop and, and to just truly make a full commitment within your heart for him. And then you can see him truly move on your behalf because your desperation to be with the people of Yah will go to another level. Your commitment to him will go to another level. And then you will see um, just things just really, truly start to change. Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. And considering the Most High and the way that he sees, he He searches the heart, you know. I know I'm, you will always hear us talk about how thankful we are to be where we are, uh, to live where we are, to be around the saints and live in common unity. But that's not everyone's uh, end game. That's not where everyone's going to be. Um, and so wherever you are, find contentment, not to the place of settling, of course, always being proactive. And you hear our leaders say, come out, come out, get out, get out, get out. And so we support that in every way. But <clears throat> though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their own righteousness. And what does it mean, though they were in it, in it, the place that they lived, we could say city, County, country, land, plain, terrain, wherever the it was, they could but only deliver their own souls by their own righteousness. <clears throat> and that righteousness needs to spring up inside of you. And it's going to take a lot of crying out and a lot of repentance. And, yeah, Leviathan, um, I bless the Most High Yah's name that, that he dropped that in your spirit, that you heard that that you're able to see the pattern of stopping and going and stopping and going. Um, it doesn't have to be that way ever again, believe it or not. You can change that right now. You can change that right now. Save yourself. Um, make a desperate change to seek Yah's face, no matter how you feel and no matter how much it hurts, um, to draw nigh to him so that he may draw nigh to you and you spend uh, time on your face and time on your knees and he will really start to chart your course um, and you can break that cycle. Probably, Mother Jennifer. Yes, ma'am. Very well said. Very well said. looks like, um, you know, the Father has already given um, instruction and he's so gracious to just truly answer your prayer. And I pray that you just continue to stay connected to the ministry and bless you, my sister. Sister Ashley. Hallelujah. And she had also said, you know, she has no clue how to attain this lifestyle all alone. And um, I, I can't imagine that either. But but the loneliness is him abiding in you and with you. And <clears throat> that can't, that, you know, we, we, may, we may be surrounded by one another. But let me tell you, 
When you get around the people of the Most High Yah, the battle is in no way, shape, or form any easier than the circumstance that you're in right now. You only have to fight yourself, the devil, and you. That's it. So get around me, Mother Jennifer, Heidi, Grandma Barb, the audience in here, the saints every day in the dining hall. She looked at you this way. She said that. She didn't do that right. She didn't honor you. She slammed the door in your face. She dropped that. Who missed that? Who 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 did that? I'm just trying to I'm trying to totally make up a bunch of whatever your mind might say. You haven't met the battle on this forefront yet. And the battle the 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 natural manifestation of the fruits of Yah that you see visually on our videos and within this ministry come with a great price and sacrifice of our mind, will, and emotions. And we also, just like you, have engaged in this battle, and we are determined to be overcomers. You overcome from where you're at, and may the Most High Yah grant you the desires of your heart. You want to be around the people, there's a way to get connected. Rejection, Leviathan, pride, insecurity, those things will try to keep you away from the people. The fears of what someone will say or do. Now imagine all those voices that keeps you away from the people multiplied when you're around all the people. It's just going to be another voice. So take this time to deal with yourself. Deal with that internal voice. You will not and cannot escape you. If I could have, If I could escape me to this very moment that I'm sitting in this chair, I would have been gone. There's nowhere for me to go to escape me. I've had no other problem in this life but me. Honestly and sincerely. So, Mother Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. Very well put. Um, you know, the thing about even being around Yah's people, when Yah needs to deal with you individually, he's going to deal with you individually. You'll find that no matter who you go to, they're not going to have an answer for you. There's particular times when you do need the help and you do need the wisdom from others. But then there are other times when you just need to receive from the Father, period. So um, really, you know, just knowing where you are right now and knowing that he is actually still dealing with you is actually a blessing. So even if you are around Yah's people, there still are times when, you know, you have to be able to deal with him for yourself. Sister Ashley. Hallelujah. Hey, I want to read something for you guys out of the deliverance manual from Jean B. Moody. Sister Alex, it's page 188, and I think it's written in here twice. Hallelujah. How to be miserable, 1 through 20. 1. Think only about yourself. Two, talk only about yourself. Three, use I as often as possible. Four, mirror yourself continually in the opinion of others. Five, listen greedily to what others say about you. Six, you be suspicious of others. Seven, you expect to always be appreciated by others. Eight, you be jealous and sensitive of others. Nine, you never forgive others. Ten, trust nobody but yourself. Eleven, you insist on consideration and respect by all others. Twelve, you demand agreement with your own views. Thirteen, sulk if people are not grateful to you. Fourteen, never forget a service you have been rendered. Fifteen, be on the lookout always for a good time for yourself. 16. Shirk your responsibilities and duties whenever you can. 17. You do as little for others as possible. 18. Love yourself supremely. 19. You always be selfish towards others. And 20. Think only of me, I, and mine, and you, and yours, and yourself. How to be miserable. Mother Jennifer. And 21, think of that list for someone else and not for yourself. You know, how many people actually 
listened to that list and had somebody else in mind instead of really thinking about it for themselves. That's a really, really good list, a really way to just reflect, um, you know, on your own heart and the things are that are going on in your own heart and a way to just truly discern yourself. Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. Remember last night we had Ask the Elect. Hey, check out Granny Barb, who flew me a paper airplane into my room, by the way, to write down her notes of her blessings from Ask the Elect. You can type yours in the chat if you want. You can type in an email tonight, straightawayhelpmeets at gmail.com. You can call us if you'd like, 310-982-4226. We got one more email, and we're expecting or wanting, desiring you guys to participate, however y'all lead tonight's show. She says, our men are examples that we can follow, and they are chosen by Yah, vigorously applying dying out to flesh. They are not tyrannical rulers, but they speak the word only. Biblical traits clearly seen for their strength and for faith. Their fathers in their right roles to see Christ first in prayer daily, crying out, repenting, and depositing the word in their own hearts and minds, doers of the word, their households are in order, wives in proper role, taught by her master, their women are instructing their children in Hebrew law, masters walking in headship and authority, sincere fear of Yah in their home, their lifestyles reflect serious commitment, our elect men are honorable, respectful in their roles, living sacrifices led by example, mission builders for the kingdom of Yah. And it's all done for the love of the Most High. And that's her blessings from last night's truth. You know, all these amazing examples, and I can, you know, we can all say amen to everything that she said. None of them were that in the way of justice and truth before the way, before the calling, before the election. So... When you have men and women making decisions mentally and physically in in their lives to change and to not conform to the world but, but to be transformed in their minds, each of us doing that, you have those people that have done it so something can click inside you. If the most high is working and dealing with you, it can click inside you to completely do a turnabout, you know, a 180 and walk a, a different way. Hallelujah. Mother Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. It just truly um, requires uh, for us women to just have a, a made-up mind, you know, to do that 180, to just have a made-up mind. Um, like Pastor Mira was talking about last night, he said there's a sister there who um, who lives at Goshen, and she is completely different, a completely different person from the way that she first came into the faith. She doesn't look the same. She does not act the same. Um, there's nothing about her where you would even be able to recognize the old man. That old woman is gone. And, you know, to me, that is that that is truly the 180 that you talk about, Sister Ashley, where you're completely unrecognizable. There are women here that I can think of who came into the faith a certain way, you know, resisting and kicking, and, and now they are just the greatest um, helpers in deliverance. They're the ones that I can send other women to to uh, be able to counsel with because I know that they're going to lead somebody else in a righteous way because they've actually done the work. They are going to actually strengthen another sister um, in humility. Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. That's beautiful. And there will be more, more and more testimonies like that. Um, you know, every change that's ever made is internal first. You know, don't don't expect the acknowledgement of anyone to see you outwardly or to acknowledge your changes outwardly um, because your inner man is changing day by day, and it only takes time before that does become your outward garment, you know. Uh, but don't be so reflecting on it. Don't be... Um, you know, worried about it, focused on it, that outward how I've seen, you know, um, change the inner man day by day, and it just works that way. Someone's going to see a strength in you. I had a I had a sister, <clears throat> I haven't replied to you yet, actually. I've been considering your questions, and she had sent me a, um, a message that said, you know, I hear you one way on the show, but <clears throat> I've been coming long enough 
to know that you're actually much quieter. Um, and that's very, very encouraging to me for you to know or recognize or discern who I really am, you know, because this is a show that can portray anyone a certain way. Uh, Elder Rufus, um, Pastor Daniel, it doesn't matter, Mother Jennifer, you know, we, we can all be portrayed a certain way, and that's not what we worry about, but it is encouraging to know that, hey, you know, someone does see that I am striving as you are striving, and uh, I will get back with you, my sister, but that just hit my heart, so a lot of us are are changing, and I think the more that we see one another as ourselves, all striving for that same goal, um, it won't make things so out of reach for you. You know, it won't make it so impossible to get there. Um, there's not an end, but there's always a change. Mother Jennifer. Yes, ma'am, definitely a change. And like you said, it's it's not impossible, but um, what is required, you know, the purging and, and everything that it takes to reach that change, it's um, – not going to be something that's going to make you feel good. But in the end, you will realize that it's definitely worth it. Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. Going to play a quick music break. Psalm 51, y'all will have mercy. That is my favorite. Be right back. You guys, please send in your thoughts. Even write them in the chat if you want to. We'll read them tonight. we got one more email. We'll be wrapping it up, expecting you guys to, to make the show tonight. so much. Hey, we are, me and Jennifer, just discussing, um, I don't know, different things, not really a, a focused topic tonight, wanting to ask your thoughts on Ask the Elect, uh, maybe just give a thumbs up, 
uh, some words. I don't know, maybe you're still just even processing and digesting it. Um, there is a lot that is given from the ministry. You kind of always do feel behind. Don't worry. <laughs> you kind of always feel behind. And I hope I'm saying that right, not misrepresenting. I don't mean that. I just mean there's so much given, and there is a a, a race to run. You know, there is a, a word to look up. There is a, a verse to study. There's a, a message to listen to, and it and it keeps you from being idle. So I pray that you're finding it more encouraging than the way that the enemy would want to present it, which is, um, you know, I can't keep up and I can't meet the goals and I can't do. You know, don't don't look at it like that. Just uh, look at it like a plate that you sit down and eat when you're hungry, and uh, y'all will lead you. Hallelujah. Brother Jennifer, we'll move to the next email or any thoughts hit you while we were on our music break. Yes, ma'am. We have another email. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, Blessings, Sister Ashley, sharing this testimony because I am so excited about Yah's doing. I've been on a journey of becoming a holy woman, and I realized a lot of my thoughts and behaviors did not meet, did not meet that, and I had no clue why truly. Yes, I knew I dealt with safe self hatred heavily, but I truly didn't even know what self-rejection felt like or was like. As I began to do some self-introspection of my mental state and fruit and especially bringing those things to prayer and matching it to the word of Yah, the spirit of Yah began to show me how I hated myself in ways I thought was healthy and showed me the root. For example, suppressing my needs to fulfill the joys of others which is man-pleasing, or not allowing myself to be free because it may offend another, or thoughts of the past where so-called friends were jealous of my potential. I hated confrontation, so I would help myself to avoid that. I repented to Yah and realized I idolized others and their wicked emotions and did not put him first. Who will care about what Yah feels? So I told him, I promised, that whenever I needed help, I would no longer run to other people or things, even to my own emotions or self. I would run to him. Literally for weeks after that prayer, I faced hardships and had so much peace reminding reminding me that, yeah, reminding, yeah, that I am back and I just want to be in his presence because right now I need his help to carry me through and teach me how to move past the hardships with him and no man. The more I do these things, the more I do these, the bigger the hardship yet. The stronger the muscle to run to my master, I take them in. I hated myself for so long. It was normal. I was blinded. I rejected myself and got upset when others didn't think of me. Or I thought they didn't think of me in the way that I thought they should. Truly, those who deal with these spirits give others a hard time. I began to see how I accused my sisters for not loving me or accusing and pointing the finger no matter what they did. Shepherd is right. Sisters who don't love other sisters truly do not love themselves. And when I say love yourself, it's not do as I will, but rather a thankfulness and contentment in who my creator has made me and being that, loving that. After deliverances from self-rejection due to pains of the past, I sat in prayer and cried, asking Yah to forgive me for not loving the one he created and died for, me, and the same for others. I also was led to forgive myself of the mistakes I made in the past because I realized I did not meet for making poor decisions. I thank Yah for sisters that are in community with me to hold me accountable, that I have my master that does not leave me to make my own decisions, safety, just like the women at the, the woman at the well, I received and drank from the water that never runs dry. My water will never be enough. I love more. I'm happier. I see myself more and in a condemning way, and not in a condemning way, but in a way to continue to be better. I'm less likely to have an evil eye. I cheer other sisters on more. I enjoy doing the things that are holy to my king. I love getting clean for him. I love to be amongst his people, and I love to encourage them. When you have self-hatred, rejection, and these self-spirits, you tend to suck the joy in the atmosphere. 
or you're just a void filler and seek to be filled with foolish things. I had to be honest with myself and continue to be, and I allow others to be honest with me so that they can be free. Once I began to love myself, all my relationships from Yah to the brethren improved. Glory to the king. I think of my sisters more. I want to be there for others more. I am truly free. When these spirits try to return, I remember scriptures that completely reject these spirits from entering. And then I thank Yah right there and then for my freedom. I committed to loving others. I want them to have Yah so much and experience what I am living today and on. May Yah receive all the glory in this. And then the second part to this, she says, I completely left out an important part. I heard the spirit say, enter into life, and the next week, choose me. I wondered why Yah would say for me to choose him when he chose me. Then in my spirit, I was led to believe it's because in times of affliction and adversity, I lacked choosing him, and I was blinded to that. That's when I realized I am not converted, and I need to be converted. I'm far away from my master. I didn't know. And I'm so thankful he showed me, which led me, which led to me telling Yah I will choose to run to him for help in prayer and depend and trust him. Then he sent hardships. Hopefully this makes sense. Hallelujah. Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. Hey, I appreciate the testimony. Um, a lot can be said and added. I really like uh, the reflections of idolatry. Um, just even mentioning idolatry, I'm trying to look over um, some of the key points What stood out to you Mother Jennifer I like the fact that um, She took accountability for herself Even though there was a lot of, of um, Accusations Toward others You know like she was talking about the self spirits They want you to accuse others They want you to point the finger at others But she really took accountability For herself And for getting um, Rid of these spirits that were Within her because at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with anybody else. You've got to get your mind right. You've got to get yourself right first so that you can actually love others. So I love the level of accountability that she took to actually get herself right and um, truly strengthening her relationship with the Father, not saying that she won't ever need anybody or that she won't need her sisters, you know, in the future, but she realized that first and foremost, you've got to know to run to Yah. Sister Ashley? Hey, um, she said, I repented to y'all, realized I idolize others. Um, I really benefited from understanding my idolatry, seeing it, you know, can I use the word enlightened? You know, when you're enlightened, when you're brought to an understanding in your inner man by the Ruach. I really I really appreciate any, you know, dialogue with idolatry. Hey, I want to read a list on page 91 of the same book Sister Alex read Deliverance Manual, Jean B. Moody, page 91. <laughs> also found the other How to Be Miserable, like we read the list earlier. It's also on page 90. Um, so, yes, it is in here twice. These are names of demons beginning with self. So I'm just going to read some of them. There's way too many to read. Self-absorbed, self-abuse, self-admiring, self-blinded, self-centered, self-conceited, self-condemning, self-conscious, self-consuming, self-criticism, self-delusion, self-despair, Self-destroying, self-destruction, self-deserving, self-devouring, self-esteem and self-ease, self-distrust, <clears throat> self-exalting, self-flattering, self-forgetfulness, self-hatred, self-idolized, self-idolized, self-importance. Self-indulging, selfishness, self-loathing, self-made, self-neglecting, self-pity, 
self-repulsive, self-righteousness, self-seeking, self-tormenting, self-unforgiveness, self-willed, self-worshipping. I'll stop there. That's the names of demons beginning with self. <clears throat> it is a struggle to get you off of your mind. And it is a benefit when you have the mental strength to do it. Mother Jennifer. Yes, ma'am. Definitely a benefit when you have the strength to do it. Um, because we're just, we're commanded to love one another. And I, I love the fact that, um, you know, this sister talked about the balance of learning how to take care of herself, um, you know, that sometimes she was always putting others first before her. But there is a balance in that, you know, because when you do live with the saints, you do want to consider others um, as well. But when you're completely neglecting, um, the things that you need, then there needs to be a balance. So um, I love the fact that there is a balance in there. You need to learn how to truly love yourself so that you can love others um, as well. And we do have more emails. Sister Ashley? Great. Pick one. Let's go. Yes, ma'am. It says, Shalom and double honor and blessings to Elder Rufus's and Deacon Bell's household. Asiolette was phenomenal last night, and I'm always amazed at how once it has ended, how long the show actually was, because it truly only felt like an hour. It is always just that good. I'm truly thankful for our leadership and the righteous examples that are continuously set before us in the ministry. Nowhere have I ever felt so protected as a woman than in the ministry, and the love that our leaders have for us sisters is always apparent and not only the speech, but in their deeds. I listened again this morning, and I just felt immense gratitude for being chosen and for being led to straightway to follow our shepherd as he follows the Messiah. Last week's Sister to Sister show was extremely edifying for me as someone who has had to forsake natural children. I found encouragement in hearing the testimonies of the aged women who have found their strength and endurance in Yah. I'm reminded that our testimonies are not our own, and I thank Yah that they were able to share with us. I'm comforted by the fact that Yah kept them as he, as he has and will continue to keep me, and I thank Yah that he has granted me the opportunity to bear seed from a master, that I have the opportunity to show her the love of Yah through my submission and obedience to her Abba. I was simply blown away by the block party, and I'm so excited for Elder and his household. I love to see the togetherness of the brethren, and I love seeing the sisters serve with joy. I love, I visited Straightway, Georgia a few times, and no matter who is visiting, you get that exact same treatment. Saints who are happy to serve and be of service. Blessings to everyone who has put a hand to helping in any capacity Bless you, Sister Jasmine, for all the behind-scenes looks for us on Marco Polo. I look forward to many more updates of the next block party, and I hope that I can serve in some capacity at Straightway, Georgia, before it's all said and done. Lastly, I just want to give a humble shout-out to my master, Brother Shannon Brown of Mississippi. I <coughs> spoke last night on the sacrifices men should be making for their families, and I couldn't help but reflect on and thank Yah for my master. I thank Yah for allowing me to be covered by a humble and selfless man who, with the fear of Yah, is always leading his home with Yah at the forefront, for never withholding rebuke, for him laying hands and commanding healing for me this week. I was healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And for displaying the true love every single day. Bless you, Mother Jennifer and Sister Ashley, for your label labor of love each week. I love you both dearly and appreciate all that you do. Sister Burgundy from Mississippi. Hallelujah. Bless you, um, Sister Burgundy. Sister Ashley? Bless you, Sister Burgundy. Burgundy sent me something that I love, love, love uh, a long time ago, before I really even uh, met you or knew you well. Thank you for the email, Burgundy. Keep on pressing, my sister. Uh, all those women around you, literally, do you understand that everyone in your life is 
within the will of Yah, whether they are obeying him or not, is still working for you. You know, so I definitely uh, praise him for the small things. You know, something that y'all heard me say before, something I once did not do. Um, but he is working his will in our lives, and I thank him for the small things. Thank him for the people around you, and keep that grateful heart. We must teach our children gratefulness um, because we come from such, you know, negativity and, oh, my goodness, help us, Father. You know, not to pass this iniquity on, but, you know, to teach that gratefulness to the next generation. And I appreciate the emails of gratefulness um, to, to the assembly, the ministry, and as always, may the Most High Yah get all the glory above all men. Hallelujah. Mother Jennifer? Hallelujah. We got another email, Sister Ashley. Right. It says, bless you, Sister Ashley and Mother Jennifer. This last Shabbat was my first time ever going to the hub, and it was so edifying and such a blessing. Just from sitting in with the children during the children's time, I was able to observe ways of talking to and handle the children, which I have been able to implement within my husband's household in this last week, and I'm already noticing a difference. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Tamika and Sister Aisha Lee, for that edification. I was able to receive from observing you with the children. It was great meeting everyone. Blessings to you and all my sisters. I cannot wait to get to know everyone more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. From seeing Sister Tamika and Sister Aisha Lee with the children, that's beautiful On that, that you guys would be lights for her. And I'm telling you, there is a light somewhere for you, an example somewhere for you, and that's what I love about the Most High Yah, uh, knitting us together, fitly joined in this body. And I'm sure it's um, a nice relief to come here, you know, because we speak a high standard according to the law, and then to see how we deal with the flaws or the flesh that go outside the law, which is, you know, the children that disobey. Or the children that are, um, you know, needing training and guidance continually. So you come, you bring your children, and it's probably encouraging to see that there are other women that are still um, putting that law in their children and and doing it right, you know, and doing it just and being good examples. It, It might take a load off your shoulders, you know, thinking that everyone is perfect and I'm going to bring my child and my child's not going to sit still, right? No, we're all in this, and we are all training our children together. And I also uh, commend Tamika and Ajali uh, for their children. I think we can find a strength in a lot or even many women and mothers in this ministry. For me, I, I can find strength in a lot of them. And uh, praise God. Mother Jennifer? It's just evidence that we really do need each other. You know, you really do need the help. Um, and the example of another woman just to be able to help you um, understand and see what it is and how it how it should be to raise your children and to, to actually learn how to um, obey and love your husbands as well. And we do have another email if you're ready. I am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. It says, Shalom and blessings, Mother Jennifer and Sister Ashley. Bless you and your willingness to be vessels that Yah uses to pour into us every single week. I have to say that listening to our Ask the Elect segment last evening made me realize how much deliverance I've received as from the time I became part of the ministry. It made me realize how blessed we are as women to learn from our righteous men that Yah has placed in front of us. We are so loved, and it's in a safe place to know that I am part of the covered. I have learned etiquette and proper code of conduct, how I'll be judged by my role and how important it is for me to strive on my knees to get in that desperately through prayer and fasting. I am more loving of his ways and dealing with anything in me that is contrary to him. I look at biblical polygyny, the covering of the widows, and all the provisions we have as women I've never felt so loved before. I wake up and smile in the confidence of Yah being part of being in this ministry. I truly desire to please the Father more than anything else 
and die to self daily so as to live for him. Sister Ashley said some time back that you've got to deal with the pricks that come from what you hear and get to a place where I am at peace and always looking forward to learn and change. I truly give all praise to the Most High Yah. Bless you well. Love, Sister Hannah. Hallelujah. Beautiful email. Sister Ashley? Hey, that's a beautiful email from a woman who at this time does not have a um, husband in the flesh, right? And lives far away from fellowship. You hear her mind? You hear her mind? She says, I notice how much deliverance I've gotten. We're so loved. It's a safe place, right? She wakes, smiles, and confidence to Yah being part of the ministry, desiring to please the Father more than anything. Just, uh, it's a beautiful testimony. I wanted to make that point because it is a mindset of that growth, you know, that it's opposite from start, stop, start, stop. Right? This is start, go. And that's it. Go. Hallelujah. Mother Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. Always looking forward. And, you know, this is a sister that has never stepped foot at the hub. You know, she's never been here before. And she's following as best as she can um, the ministry. You know, every single thing that is put out, she's there. She's following. She's engaged. She's committed. And that is just truly what it takes is a, a true commitment in your heart. Sister Ashley? Hallelujah. A uh, comment from the chat room says, Pastor Dow spoke of the free will and it's very humbling to comprehend how Yah gave the man a woman to help him and they both have free will and cost Yah his own blood and he knew it. Thank Yah for his selfless love. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Just looking over the chat room, I don't find any other uh, comments except just hallelujah. And we're loved, you know, a lot of agreement and hallelujah for the Ruach. But uh, thank you, chat room. Thank you, listening audience. I don't have anything else. Mother Jennifer, go ahead and wrap up and end the show from your end. Yes, ma'am. Um, everybody stay tuned for Block Party Part 2. We are preparing here at Straightway, Georgia, to receive uh, the brethren. They will be here on first day, and I just look forward to um, being able to host everyone. And I just wanted to um, leave. I think I got something I want to read. I'm sorry. I did. No, ma'am, I don't. I think I lost my place. But blessings to everyone. Stay tuned for Block Party Part 2. Love you all dearly. Hallelujah. Let me read you. Um, hey, Sakina, if you got the outro with the countries, I want to hear that tonight. I'm going to read you real quick. Sister Justice and the Daughters of Zion Tea Party. I'm going to give you some information, okay? Date, time, location will be determined. But there's a tea party, dresses or garments and attire for you, your daughters, the mothers, the girls. No age limit, Okay. There's a tea party coming up at our next feast. So you got an RSVP by August the 1st. Um, so we got another, what, 40, 45 days maybe. But I want to give you Jess's phone number, and she wants it out here. So you can type it in the chat. It's 864. It's 864, area code, 395-3722. Contact Justice one more time, 864-395-3722. Let her know if you're coming because there's going to be guest speakers. There's going to be tea and snacks. There's going to be pictures. Like I said, date, time, and location will be determined. That means let her know if you're coming. Let her know if you and your daughters are coming, you and your communities are coming. Hallelujah. She's trying to have it at a convenient time. It won't hinder anyone. I know some of you don't know your cook day yet and all your duties, but, hey, that tea party is going right up at the top of the priority list, right underneath feeding the saints. Hallelujah. All right. Love y'all, bless y'all Let me see Any text messages Sometimes people might send me something Bless you, Mother Chris You come to my mind Bless you, bless you Alright I don't know if Sakina is able to play it So I'm going to do this Uh Thank you, Sakina Bless y'all, have a good night
Sverige och jag älskar min straightway stam och mina systrar. Finland. Olen hebrealainen Suomesta ja rakastan straightway heimoani ja siskojani. Hani Ivriam Israel or Revet et Shevet Straightway Vachotai. I am a Hebrew from Trinidad and Tobago. I love my straightway tribe and sisters. Puerto Rico. Soy Hebrea de Puerto Rico. Y amo a la tribu de Straightway. Y también a mis hermanas. Philippines. Usako ka Hebreo gikan sa Cebu, Philippines. Gihigugman ako ako ang pamilya sa Straightway. Labi na ang mga eksuon na ako nga babae. Mwe seyon ebu. Mwe fet Haiti. Mwe reme Straightway tribwe e semyo. Australia. I am a Hebrew from Australia. And I love my straightway tribe and sisters. Japan. I am a Hebrew from Japan. I love my straightway tribe and sisters. Canada. I am a Hebrew from Canada. And I love my straightway tribe and sisters. Hi.